Oops. Okay. Let me have a looky here. Um, do sort myself out. Okie dokie. So, I think I'm live. Took me a little bit to set up. Good morning, guys. I'm doing my live on YouTube this morning. Um, and it's my first time ever going live on YouTube. So, uh, if I, uh, I'm just seeing if I can see comments. If I don't answer your question, um, it's because I don't know where, where it is. <laughs> Let me, um, anyway. Uh, I will work as um, as we work through it. I'll work out what's happening. Let me have a look here. Oh, no, I don't want to go there. I think I'm okay. We might just leave it there and see how we go. Let's see. Okay, this is um, awesome. Sarah Becker, hello, can you see me? <laughs> Awesome. Yay. Okay. Cool. I might, I think I might um, continue the lives on YouTube instead of Facebook. Um, awesome. Okay. Awesome. Wonderful. Cool. And I can see your comments. So I'm glad that. Um, awesome. Thank you for this suggestion. That's so good. I didn't even think about um, YouTube live. Um, Facebook is so frustrating. Something's just gone really wrong with Facebook. <laughs> I've been um, restricted three times now. It's ridiculous and it's very frustrating when you run your business and have groups and that. So uh, wonderful alternative um, way to do it is, um, is YouTube. Awesome. Okay. So I've got, so how's everything going? I know it, it's disgusting, isn't it? It's really bad. Um, hopefully it will... I don't know. Hopefully it will change, but um, who am I scratching my dogs? Scratching on the chair here. Poppy. Yeah, hopefully things will start to um, change for the better. A friend of mine actually had a, a, a Brumby group. Um, she had 40,000 people in her Brumby group and Facebook just removed it overnight, gone, just deleted the whole group. So it was um, not good, not good at all. Um, so I'm a little bit worried about that. So I am trying to make some alternative arrangements. Um, and I think what I might do is focus a little bit more on the YouTube channel. Uh, yeah, so I'll try and get everybody over to the YouTube channel <laughs> as well as the group. And I've got another another um, platform as well that I'm building up. Yeah, um, good idea. Good idea. I'll do that now. And I've got my coffee here. I'll pop that. So I'll go in. And because I have to keep changing over um, profiles all the time because I can't use my normal profile, so I'll do this. Um, Live now on YouTube. Okay. So frustrating. Awesome. Done it. Cool. Awesome. Done that. So I've let them know. Um, Sarah Becker, how's everything going with your beautiful boy? Is he settling down and um, how are you going with his feet? No worries. Sorry I didn't, um, I, I've probably missed a couple of your comments from um, in the in between when I was answering your post and then getting um, put in Facebook jail. So <laughs> I get a little bit lost and another frustrating thing with uh, Facebook is I don't get um, notified all the time 
Uh, and it, it, yeah, so quite often I might miss some posts if I'm tagged in it for some reason, Facebook doesn't notice, notice, um, like notify me. So it's a little bit frustrating. Um, awesome. Excellent. Great to hear. It's really hard when you have them in, um, if you have to keep them enclosed, um, because they are an animal that needs to move a lot. Um, they're a flight animal. They're a, they're a, you know, they they love to, you know, move. Um, so it is really, really frustrating. But in saying that, give me the injured one and pick up another. But he will give me the injured one. Yep, and pick up another, but not pick it. Yeah, yeah. I'd say one of your major problems is the fact that he is sore on that leg. Um, obviously, he's going to be and. Um, you did the electric fence. I know it was too much. What do you mean by too much? I've got electric fencing. I need it. One of my mares walks through it if it's not on. She's a little bit cheeky, but it's really good. I think electric fencing is the best, actually. At least you keep them safe and they'll stay away from it. Um, and you don't want him. Oh, he was losing his mind. What, from the electric fence? Oh, was he was he frightened of the electric fence or ah oh, store rest yeah it is it's it's really hard i had um a horse on store rest for 6 months he was he was good actually um but he'd been off the track yeah, he'd been off the track for uh, a year or more, a couple of years actually. So he was already, you know, he'd, he'd um, not that he'd been retrained because I didn't even know about retraining back then, um, way back 2000, um, before I even worked in racing. But um, so he's still in the, he's still on store rest though, isn't he? And it'll be like time goes pretty fast once you once you can. Um, he's just four, yeah. He's young, um, he's full of energy, and he's still. And I think another, you know, the fact that he's not even retrained, he's come straight out of racing. They have a completely that all they know is racing, and um, you know, it is going to be difficult for you until he can get out and you can do a little bit more. Yeah. It's, as long as you um, have control of him and oh, will uh, will I let him out for half half a day the last – you've been doing that, have you? If um, As long as you have control of him and you know he's not going to take off um, or get out of your, um, out of your um, you know, hold because you don't want him to set back that injury. Um, but it, it is hard. I mean, I know I've worked in racing for uh, nearly 20 years. Yeah, too tempting at spring, yeah. It's a little bit risky. Um, I would try and deal with it, keep him. So what have you got him on? Have you just got him on um, just a very high forage, really low energy feed? Basically all he needs is a very low starch, um, lots ad-lib ad -lib, ad -lib hay and just a small hard feed just to put um, your vitamins and minerals in just to keep him um, topped up with his vitamin and minerals yeah, hay in a balancer, yeah. As long as the balancer, do you know the balancer is um, has no fillers in it, like no bran or um, mill mix or anything like that? Quite often balancers will have these, these hidden um, ingredients that can really set horses off, um, especially over, 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 at, over your way. Um, and this triple crown, yeah. Just, just have a look. As it's just um, particularly over um, your way in your country, over the, um, a lot of the feeds seem to have the um, fillers. And I've, I've actually, but I've actually spoken to quite a few people, um, and they sent through because I'm really passionate about equine. Um, welfare and um, you know nutrition. I should be saying I'm passionate about equine welfare as well. And I have ex I have gone through um, a lot um, 
previously with my horses I didn't even realize I was feeding fillers and grain so I'm very I, I don't like feeding any grain because I've actually had a lot of problems with my horses I've had laminitis but um hay in a balancer a little alfalfa and this triple crown if you tell me um what the um, balancer is and I can have a look up for you um fillers are like mill mix um they call it over your mill mix mill run you can even get and that would really set him off so mill mix and mill run uh and and like did except they they want no molasses yeah the only thing is vets don't always pick up on this mill mix and mill run um quite a lot of foods have been recommended by vets and then when you really go into it um it's like oh no um at feed excel um I've got an online course, um, the Kickstart Roadmap, and in that I have links to Feed Excel, but you can still get to Feed Excel. Um, I'll put another link. I had it up before in the group. Um, really good. So Nerida Richards is an equine nutritionist. She's worldwide. She's an Australian equine nutritionist. But um, the Feed Excel um, nutrition calculator and also the Facebook group and website have so much valuable information. Um, she's wonderful. And she goes into the hidden ingredients in these feeds. Um, yeah, well, let me know what um, if you can tell me the balancer and I'll have a look for you um, because that could be creating some problems. Um, it's a triple crown balancer, is it? If you give me the name of the um, balancer, I will. Um, I will look it up for you. Um, so he's on. So the alfalfa is good, a little alfalfa. Um, and. Oh, okay. Yeah, if, I, if you can give me everything that you're feeding him um, and I'll have it a look up for you, the triple crown. So the triple crown is a, um, a complete feed, is it? Yeah, let me know and I'll have it a look. I'll have a look at, at it for you today. Um, yeah, that's okay. Just get it. If you pop it in a post um, or send it to me in, if you pop it up just in a post um, or in the comment, um, uh, you can PM me um, or pop it in um, a post, one of the comments under the group, though I might miss it. So maybe PM me and just let me know. Um, but also put it in a post as well because it's good for other people to see, um, you know, that these can be hidden ingredients. Uh, and quite often another little sneaky thing is, a lot of these feeds don't even have the ingredients on them. You'll look and you go, um, they only have the nutrition analysis. They don't have the actual ingredients. So that's a sign that it's got um, some byproducts. So what they're called, if it says grain-free, they can still have by grain byproducts in it. And that's a real worry. Um, not only that, but it's a worry for um, that it can cause behaviour problems, but also the gut health. Um, it can damage the, the gut, these byproducts. Um, and, yeah, it's um, a little bit of a marketing um, sneaky thing that see, the byproducts like Mill Run and Mill Mix are really cheap. They're basically cheap fillers. They're really cheap to throw in and it bulks up, you know, like they'll, they'll use it as um, um, a bulking agent, um, but they're, they're really damaging. Um, we have them here in Australia as well, so there is feeds. It doesn't seem to be as common as over um, your way. Equine Advantage 30% ration balancer. I'll have a quick look, but I might have to equine, um, equine Advantage. Whoops. Each, um, oh, quite an advantage ration balancer. Um, uh, quite an advantage. Here we go. Might, um, a pellet is designed to be fed alongside hay or pasture. Ah. Yes, it's got meal mix in it. This is probably half your problem. So, wow. Okay, straight away. Um, I don't know if you can see it. I'll try and put it up at the screen. This is so, this is why it's so sneaky. This is, could definitely be causing some issues with you. So, the list of ingredients. So, I'll just make, I don't know if you can see it. <laughs> is that it? Yeah, I know. It's really sneaky. And you know how many people that reach out to me saying they're having problems with their horse? And this would absolutely um, 
cause him to be hot. Wheat is one of the hottest feeds. Um, it can really cause behavior problems. So I'll just dump. Um, so the list of ingredients is the first, and you know how with ingredients, the 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 higher it up is in the list is the the um uh what's what's one of the main ingredients so your first one is dehulled soybean meal and then your next uh and look soybean meal is good but you also have to make sure it doesn't say here whether it is an extruded cooked soybean meal so there's issues with soybean meal as well um I've, I've talked about that, but I will um, go into that. I think I've gone into that. So your next in line is wheat middlings. So basically, so can, I don't, you're not going to see it probably. <laughs> um, wheat, and it's backwards. It's, so your main ingredients in this feed is wheat middlings and dehulled soybean meal. And then it goes on to your calcium carbonate, dicalcium phosphate, sun good alfalfa meal, rice bran. So that's a grain. Flaxseed meal's good, but you can get that in other ways. Dried, excuse me, dried sacker, um, got a hiccup, sacker fermented solubles. And this has got cane molasses in it as well. So you will see here, this has actually got molasses in it. Sorry, I don't know if you can see. Uh, oh, oh. Cane, I'll put this up, cane molasses. I know it's backwards and you'll see here, Wheat middlings. Um, so, yeah, not a good feed. Um, and this is the thing is vets don't seem to um, pick up on these things. I suppose it's, uh, you know, like they have their areas of expertise and vets more than likely do not um, seem to know a lot about equine nutrition um especially with these situations um as time has evolved um yeah well that's exactly right freshness as well um you have to um worry about the freshness um there's there was oh it goes in it was particularly you can get over your way i haven't seen it um here um Distill, distillers grains is, is fed quite often out um, over in the US and that's bad because then it can go down into, see, all these types of feeds can go into um, having problems with um, moulds. Uh, I, I did, I found a really good, I've got an article on there somewhere, moulds, um, toxins, uh, mycotoxins. So uh, you do have problems with these types of complete feeds having issues with depending on where they're processed the problem is the processing plants if they're processed in a processing plant that is doesn't only do um is is an equine only um processing plant well then you can have issues if they're doing all other feeds and if it doesn't say it's an equine only processing plant that's another um reason to be concerned as well um because because different like feeds for cattle and sheep um are different than what horses can have quite often um certain mycotox toxins i'm looking at introducing prize easy feed um hey kate um prize easy feed for my four thoroughbred mares one has just recently come into ridden work your feed video was really helpful yay i'm so so glad prize easy feed um is that easy keeper so Easy Feed's got grain in it, I'm pretty sure. Um, hi, Kate, how are you? I like YouTube. <laughs> I think I'm going to do more on YouTube, actually. Um, so um, with um, Sarah Becker, I would definitely um, stop. I think this feed, this um, ration balancer is going to be um, is causing it can definitely be one of your problems so uh, we can talk about that in the group um or lmf that was recommended so fresher i guess and i'll check on the equine only plan yeah look for something and please just send it through to me um pop it in the group and say what do you think about this feed and i'll have the look up of the ingredients for you um kate easy keeper easy keeper's great yes really good Are you, you're obviously in australia kate um I love see pride. So even so here in Australia, I find our um our companies, so prize is an equine only mill, high gain is an equine only mill. Um, and so you know they're not combining um your cattle feed 
Um, yeah, Australia, I like our feeds in Australia. We still have to be careful. So Pride still have um, some of their equine feeds do have um, grain-based, similar to um, what you've had issues with, Sarah, is these um, – uh, you've got wheat and that. One of the prides, I had a gentleman reach out. His horse was off his head, off, um, and he was on a prize feed. And I think it was, um, might have been easy feed or AR, uh, no, easy performance, something like that. And it is just pumped with um, wheat, like wheat, and also it prides. Um, is it prides? Prides. Um, uh, Biomare cube. See, uh, way back in my pre, um, in my grain days when I was feeding grain and I had my own racehorse spelling business as well. Racehorses are different, um, though I would approach it completely differently now, spelling racehorses, but I fed Biomare cubes and um, they're very heating. Um, so, um, yeah, just be, really look at the ingredients and be really um, um diligent and having a look at if they haven't got a list of the ingredients look at that as a warning sign um and quite often the feeds over in the u.s um don't have the ingredients particularly um you get your pur um, purina um yes biomare is very heating kate um it's got um i'm pretty sure it's got um barley and i used to feed it until um I used to feed, I was a big grain feeder until one of my big horses. I mean, you learn, you're continually on a learning um, journey with horses. But um, Feed XL and Nerida Richards has been really fantastic for, um, you know, I, I love studying and researching all of this. It's pretty much what I'm doing all the time. And then I teach you guys. Um, and Grain is not good for horses and it's not good for their digestive system. It's not good for ulcers and these hidden grain ingredients like the um, mill mix and the mill run and the distiller's grains, um, I, none of these are good for horses. I did in one of my Q&As, I think it was one of the recent ones, and I do have, um, I try and keep the talk, talk about what topics I'm speaking about. Um but I did speak about wheat in a few weeks ago on one of the Q&As where um, I talk about the damages of what wheat can do, not only sending the horse off their head, um, and but uh, also to how it can damage the intestinal lining of the gut. A bit like a bit like humans, we can have wheat sensitivities, especially the wheat that is um, grown nowadays uh, with the genetically you know genetic modification and things like that i think we just need to be a little bit careful of feeding um you know grains definitely i, I tend to avoid um unless you've got a horse that um is really really you know high level of venting or that you really don't need to feed grains or racing um, and then in that instance, you need to be very careful as well. Um, yeah, feed Excel is fantastic, Kate, isn't it? Um, have, yeah. Uh, yeah, I guess I, I think feed Excel is um, really, I don't take, so when I do, I see pasture, I mean, I could talk about nutrition forever, <laughs> like everything with horses. Like there's a whole, if you have your horse on pasture, well, then you have a whole issue with pasture as well, which I've had a big issue with pasture and grain grass with my horses. And when I use feed Excel, I have to also take in consideration some issues that I've had with pasture. But feed Excel and the calculator is fantastic. And Nerida Richards has amazing. Um, she talks about the hidden ingredients um, in, in these feeds. Um, do you give any feed to the horses who are on pasture all the time, half time, keeping him trimmed to help his leg? Yeah, um, I'm, yeah, I do. So my horse is down here, and you do have issues with over it. Um, in your mine will be on pasture twenty four seven. Yeah, where are you, Kate? What state are you in? Um, so pasture is a whole uh, issue in itself, and it can it, it can. Um, Pasture can cause mineral imbalances depending on the type of pasture that you have. Horses aren't designed to eat this green lush grass that we have and also the types of grasses that are um, used for production of sheep and cattle like here where I am. And once again, this is something recent that I've learned. Um, they, um, you know, your your phalaris and your ryegrass and all of that is basically for a production of sheep and cattle. Um, it's not suited to horses and it can be too high. And um, my pasture is very high in fructin, particularly in the autumn and the, are you in the ACT? Down here. That's where I am. Well, I'm over, ah, 
ACT, there you go. I'm over at, um, uh, where am I? Wulkara. <laughs> over on the other side of, um, I've just had a client's horse go back to the Yas area. Um, beautiful Ty um, was with me. He went home yesterday and he, they're over in Yas. So, yeah, I know. Ty's gone. Did they actually in Yas? They've just recently moved to Yas and I lived in Yas for six years. So there you go. Um, I rode at Queen Bean. Uh, I've been riding at Canberra Racetrack. I've recently retired from track work, but Canberra for six years and over at Goulburn and, and Queen Bean. Um, Yeah, I do, Sarah Becker. So I do give um, my horses that are on pasture all the time. Well, I have issues with my pasture. So I um, bring them in and I just work out. Um, I The main thing with pasture is to find out what type of pasture you have. And also the important thing with pasture is to provide a really good um, mineral and um, a mineral um, supplement um, and vitamin. So making sure that their vitamins and minerals are um up up to a good uh, level um particularly if you're grazing on very lush green pastures so just having a, and also to the seasons as we know pasture changes um through seasons so green pasture um is high in sugars um it can be very high in potassium and um, it can deplete magnesium and calcium. So I had a lot of problems with um, my horses becoming very depleted in magnesium and calcium because my pasture here has been um, ex-cattle and sheep um, country. So it's it's been highly fertilised. If you're in... Um, if you're on um, pasture that is... Uh, you know, hasn't been fertilised, you're going to be a lot better. Um, but definitely on a horses with pasture, minerals, um, your calcium, magnesium, and your um, or, or your um, what do you call them? The micro minerals. I'm having a mental blank. Um, and Kate, with you, um, the ACT and Yas. So that is what they call. And you'd go if you know um, um, on Feed Excel. Um, they're the cool season past cool season grasses. Uh, so yeah, I. Um, you can put in the feed Excel calculator what type of pastures you are grazing. But the cool season grasses, um, you need to be a little bit um, wary of, once again, just keeping the minerals balanced. Um, yeah, keeping your minerals balanced, you might be interested. To pay, if you're on 24-7, I use, because you're in Australia, um, Belinda's Amazing Minerals, bam, Um it's fantastic. Um, she has a mix uh, and it's very economical. Um, she's down in Tasmania, but uh, she has um, Belinda's Amazing Minerals and it's she targets to cool seasons like your ACT, Queensland pastures, um, your Victorian pastures. So I feed that. Um, and also to, um, or if you're on the feeds, you might even need, you, you may not even need to go to the Easy Keeper. If you're on, um, on Easy Keeper, just balancing it out with, um, uh, yeah, um, yeah, just making sure your minerals are balanced, basically. That's that's all. So the, I actually spoke to her about the Easy Keeper. Um, if you're on the Easy Keeper, um, you probably don't need to feed the BAM minerals. Um, if you're on the BAM minerals, I actually overdid it a little bit in my feed. I was probably feeding um, a bit overzealous. So if you're on the BAM minerals, yeah, if you're on the BAM minerals, you probably don't need to feed the Easy Keeper. Um, so have a look and just see which way you want to go. Um, you can either do the Easy Keeper and not worry about the BAM or you can do the BAM and not worry about the Easy Keeper and just do the Lupins um, uh, or, um, yeah, your Lupins and I Feed Fibre Protect, as you would know if you watched the video. Um, so, yeah, I, I got a little bit overzealous in that video. I probably got a little bit overzealous with um, – doing the easy keeper and the bam together um i've now since that video um cut I either go one way or the other the easy keeper um yeah crack lupins are fantastic love crack lupins love them love them crack lupins fiber protect um what grass is the best i have a variety and he hasn't gotten the green pastures yeah i feel bad about it but i guess it's better he's eating grasses that are just going to seed and not green don't want don't feel bad about it green grasses sarah becker don't feel bad about it um the green grass is not actually very good for him <laughs> it's better to have brown um dry native grasses i actually bring my horses in of a daytime off the grasses um and have their big, as you would have seen in my feed video, have them on their big um, 
slow feeder hay nets. Green grass is not good. I saw uh, an article that actually spoke about that. It's not designed for horses. They're not designed to eat the green grass. Um, They're designed to um, eat um, your native drier grasses. We can't avoid the green grasses, um, so limit the green pick. Um, That's what I do. I limit the green pick. And and you can get your um you can get I don't know so I don't know what grasses your native grasses are best I don't know what grasses you have over there, um but uh, can I fertilize with fish I don't know I, I'm not really sure um of fertilizing um, I wouldn't fertilize with anything for the pasture but I, I'm not very but then I don't know a lot about um grasses and um all of that you can get I I think it's really good to get you can get a soil test done um so um especially if you own the property you can get uh, a testing of your soil and a testing of your grasses and you can send that away and that's really good you probably need to do it um yeah post some um pics in the group yeah um and also to uh, of grasses lost yeah of the grasses um also if you go into if you get on to um, feed Excel site and uh, if they've got a really she's got a really good group the feed Excel group um, and you can post your pics of the grasses in there they're a little bit more, more knowledgeable um, with the grasses than I am um, I reached out to an ag- uh, agronomist um, and actually got them to identify my grasses and then I spoke Nerida was wonderful I spoke with her personally I had a lot of problems with mycotoxins um, in my grasses um, and that's where um, you can get a toxin binder. But um, Sarah Becker, with your boy, because he's not on grass very much, well, he's not on grass and you're only just letting him out to have a pick, um, I wouldn't worry about that too much. But when you have him out, when you have your horse grazing out on, on pasture 24-7, it's definitely something um, to consider. And with the fertilising, I'm not up to date with that. Um, so I would probably look at... Um, the feed excel group um and i know that there's someone in the feed excel group um that is a a, a bit of a pasture um specialist <laughs> so they're really good to ask about um pastures and and feeds and all of that as well i've sort of learned a lot from that group myself and doing um, my research so yeah um and Sarah Becker, let me know. So post in all your feed. So um, we know that that balancer is not good. So trying to get something that's clean. I love um, the clean feeds. Um, I, I, I look at all um, the ingredients of everything. My horses eat cleaner than me. <laughs> and I'm one to, I mean, I, I, I'm pretty simple with my feed. But um, after being through knowing the damage that all these fillers can do, look at the ingredients. If your feed doesn't have a list of ingredients, be as that a warning sign. So a lot of the Purina feeds over in the States don't have a list of the ingredients and they're all filled up with fillers. Um, and, um, yeah, let me know what else you feed and I can have a look at it for you, Sarah Becker. Um, and, and um yeah, um, I can, what was that? Did you have triple crown? Anyway, yeah, uh, let me know. Um, I have a sip of my coffee because I've got a question to answer now for Paula. In regards to bits. So I'll go to the question down here in my Facebook group. Um, I'm on Facebook. I have to swap profiles. <laughs> Facebook's gone mad. I've been in Facebook jail three times now. Hey, Paula, how are you? Bloody Facebook. Though I like them. Um, I like YouTube. This is cool. I've had a little bit of a, um, oh, I've had some tech nightmares and I've been a little bit unwell on that. So I haven't uploaded videos um, and that for a couple of weeks on um, YouTube. Um, I'm obviously in Facebook jail um, and trying to get, I can't do anything on my page. I don't even know how to get on my page. I tried to do my profile to get on my Facebook page, but I can't post anything. So I'm just going to have to wait um, another 20 days or 19 days today till I can get back on my Facebook page. Um, 
But I've got my Kaz Gracie with my beautiful Laszlo, my dog that I lost last year as my profile. So you know it's me if I come up as Kaz Gracie. Um, I'm trying to find your question. I'll just go in here. So bits, this is interesting. Bits are like nutrition. Bits are like a science as well. Um, here's your question. I'm going to sneeze. Oh, wait a sec. What have I done with her? <clears throat> um, whoops. Facebook is very frustrating. Sorry, I'm trying to find a question, Paula. Um, two comments. Why can't I find a question? Um, I know what it was. You've got a... Hmm. That's ridiculous. Silly Facebook. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Paula. <laughs> Hey, Facebook. Um, what is the best bit to use for retraining? I'm using a loose ring snaffle with rubber. It's quite thin. Not sure if I'd try a different one. Yeah, so bits in itself is a little bit of a science and um, I'm looking more into that as well because we have to remember, um, depending on also too, are you, is you, I remember speaking to you before and you were having issues with your, um, your OTT being really sensitive in the mouth. Um, is that correct? Like they were, um, you've got a mare or getting, sorry, I'm having a mental blank. Um, very, very sensitive. And like you said that they really disliked the bit. Is that correct? Um, so bits, uh, so off the track thoroughbreds have had so much bit pressure Um and they have really, I mean, quite often they habituate, or well, we know they well, they lean into the bits, they habituate to the bit pressure. And it's quite, I mean, that, um, yeah, she used to hate the bit, but she's very unresponsive to it, yeah. So once again, I think I spoke to you that before, going back and which I've got, I'll get the videos up. Don't worry, I'll get them up. Um, I did one yesterday too with Dragon of doing the stop and go and teaching them to be light in hand first and then we go to the bit um but she's very responsive to the halter awesome excellent so that's when you come to the bit so the bit um she may be um not happy so you've got a loose ring single jointed um a loose ring snaffle with rubber and it's single jointed so the first thing is the loose ring i would probably go to a as i mentioned yesterday a, a double jointed one like a French link because the loose rings are harsher. Um, so with the loose ring ones and with the racing bits and everything, they have a lot of pressure on the bars of their mouth and a lot of tongue pressure. So you can imagine in racing there's a massive amount of tongue pressure, there's a massive amount of bar pressure um, on the bars of their mouth, which is the gap between their um, incisors and their molars um, at, the, at their pre, so the incisors and their premolars. So when we're transitioning transitioning to um, a life after racing where we don't want them leaning onto the bit, we don't want them um, being mouthy. So horses that pull that off, race horses that pull their tongue back and all of that, they're, wanting, they're trying to avoid the um, tongue pressure. Um, they're trying to avoid the unpleasantness. The, the single-jointed snaffle and points up so it's got a nutcracker reaction so also too um if it's a single jointed snaffle and it doesn't have a curve i it, there's some bits and i'll point out i'll give you some links so ideally the best bit for a, for retraining is one that's going to be as comfortable as possible in their mouth now every off the track thoroughbred is different. We also have to realise they've got different shaped mouths. Um, if she's got, there's not a lot of space between the lower jaw and the palate. They've got this big, thick, 
tongue. So having a thin bit is not a bad thing. You don't want it very thin that it is painful, but you don't want a very thick bit. Um, a very thick bit is just going to be too bulky in the mouth. The single jointed snaffle is quite harsh, but you're saying that she's unresponsive. Now, I think um, without seeing exactly what she's doing and how you're um, doing it, don't forget in the academy you can get a video and post it um, in the academy um, and I can have a look and see how she's unresponsive. That would be really good. If you can get a video and, and, and so I can have a look, Paula, at what she's doing, that will help. But yeah, she fights it more than anything. So she's going to fight it because um, she needs to learn to give to the pressure. But the single joint's going to have a nutcracker reaction and push up onto the um, roof. It's got a nutcracker action and pushes up onto the palate and it also comes down onto the bars. So the, the um, French link is going to be a softer kind of bit. I would go the French link. Um, and... Then you can look at, if you post a photo, if you can send me a photo of the bit, um, if it's got straight bars, so also what's a nice bit to get is a French link, so the double joint, and a the flatter the link or the wider the link in between, the softer it is. So you really want a soft bit and then teach her to give to bit pressure. So the first thing you want to do is make sure that the bit is not causing her any pain. Um, and that she's um, has enough room, so you don't want a big bulky bit in her mouth. To actually have a bit that fits perfectly is probably a good idea to get a bit specialist out. But you can have an idea. If you, the first thing with retraining is, is I, I personally believe to go to the simplest, softest, kindest bit that you can, so that you don't associate any pain with the bit. They've also they've already had pain associated with the bit um, in racing. So we need to retrain that. So she could be fighting the nutcracker action to the bit. So I'd go the French link. I then think that um, you want to have a look and see if the French link has um, a curved shape to the bars. So, you, you know, the bars, so you've got that joint in the middle. Are the, are the I want, oh, I haven't got, have I got any bits here? Um, I'll see if, I, yeah, I was going to, I've got some bits. I'll bring them up and we can do a little demonstration of bits. But the straighter the um, bars of the bit, once again, the more tongue pressure it has and the more pressure on the bars. So a kind bit, I'll find one. I actually, I don't know if you can see it, but I did uh, take, let me see if I can find it, some photos. Here we go. Oh, no, that, that one. Uh, there's a really good, I don't know if it's overseas, uh, there's a really good, um, the Bit Bank. I know we have the Bit Bank Australia. I think they're overseas as well. Um, and they're really good um, for just showing you all different types of bits and I did here we go so I don't know if you can see it and it would be really good what I can do one day is we can actually do a zoom session that would be really cool I've got to learn out how to um, do zoom properly but here we go um see if I can find a photo of Um, so this is, I don't know if you can see it, but this is probably, this is, um, your double jointed, um, loose ring snaffle. So that's a loose ring snaffle. Now I would, with retraining off the track thoroughbreds, I prefer to have an egg butt. Um, so a, a, not a loose ring snaffle. The reason for that is the loose, the loose ring is not as, um, clear in training the responses so the loose ring is good to go to when your horse is trained to light responses and you're wanting to find out the aid so it's a little bit unstable it doesn't uh apply it, it's it doesn't apply the aids as clear so it's more for finessing the aids i would go an egg butt um 
egg butt uh, snaffle. I would go an egg butt um, French link, so double jointed snaffle for your mare, Paula. And I would do um, have a curved. So I don't know if this one. So this is a bit Bank Australia. So this one is. See if it's curved. Because you're in Australia, Paula, you might be um, interested in looking at this one. Um, it's a turtle top, so it uses no downward tongue pressure, which is very important for off-the-track thoroughbreds. So this could be her. So we have, so this is the turtle top. Um, and I looked at this, so off the so racehorses have had so much tongue pressure, they've had so much, they've had tongue ties more than anything. And the reason they put tongue ties on is because they're trying to get away from the tongue pressure and they suck their tongue back. So instead of addressing the issue, okay, which is why, you know, avoiding the tongue pressure, um, racing just puts tongue ties on to hold the tongue down. Um, but we want to go to the root cause of it. So she's probably trying to avoid tongue pressure. So we want to find the, the um, kindest bit. So this one is, here's a link for the, my five top five bits for off-the-track thoroughbreds. That's on BitBank Australia. But I would go, it's got, they've got an egg butt snaffle in this one as well. The new, I don't even know how to pronounce it, new shul turtle top snaffle. Um, so a nice curve. So the bars here, so you have the the um, the French link, the double joint in the middle. Then what's nice is to have the curve in the bars. Okay, so that releases. Um, oh, yeah, what they use in racing. Sarah Becker, do you want to know what they use in racing? Yeah, they use so um, the common one in racing is um, a lugging bit. Um, I'll show you. Um, yeah, it's this. I mean, I've ridden track work. I mean, I know because I've ridden track work for so long and I've only recently retired. Um, and the amount of pressure that the horses take, I'll show you, I'll find one. Um, so I'll just show um, Paula this, um, that, but get the egg bunt egg bunt um and with the tongue and a chain and a bridle yeah they don't um it's, it's just a lot of pressure on their mouth they're taught to ru to um, run up but you can do it like if I was a tra if I trained horses I would you know I would address it differently um but with you Paula get an egg butt I can find a link I'll find it actually. Let me do this and try and find one that's got the curve um, so that we can avoid putting as much pressure on her tongue as possible and then have the egg butt side so you've got um, more of a solid, um, not a loose, unstable um, one, um, but more of a solid uh, a solid bit for her so that it's not as unstable. Uh, let me see if I can find. I did have it. I'll go to the bit bank and I'll find, then I'll find the um, bit bank. I did save it somewhere. So let me go to the bit bank. Here we go. I'll go here. Uh, it is called the, but have a look to see what your, um, your French link is like. Paula, and see if that's something you can start her with because bits are expensive. So you want to make sure you get the right one. Um, bits. See if I can find these bomber bits are nice as well. Um, do, do, do. um, I kept it. I wish I could find. Uh, here we go. This might be it. I did get it sent through to me. Um, angled this. Um, oh no, we don't want the Bridget Oon. Egg butt snaffle, new trans angled. Something like this. But you need to the reason, so ah, uh, thank you so much, Sarah Rebecca. Yeah, oh my gosh, I know their lives so well. I go into um in my um I go all into their lives in racing in um, the kickstart course. Um, and it's, I think it's really important 
to know how they live in racing because it gives you a deeper understanding of your horse and also too they're just amazing animals they amaze me so much um what they put up with in racing i'm not saying every um yeah let me know it, it is fantastic it's great i, I i'm really proud of my course <laughs> um and when I get my act together, you get the Off the Track Thoroughbred Success Academy as a bonus as well. I've had um, a bit of a, I got a little bit of a tech overwhelm. So when you get the Kickstart course, um, you get the new Off the Track Thoroughbred Success Academy. I've got um, the tie retraining uh, course coming up in that. I had a bit of a tech nightmare and deleted the whole lot and got depressed about it. But anyway, that's another story. That's okay. Um I've, and I have to say, too, I've um, been really struggling. Um, I, I finished work, and it's a good thing things happen for a reason, but I uh, I got sacked from my job. I came back after an injury um, last July to track work. I've had many injuries, and I got sacked because I spoke up about um, equine welfare in the stable that I was working in, and... I've seen, I mean, I've seen everything in racing and um, it left me financially in a real bad dilemma because I wasn't ready to um, transition from, you know, something I've done for 18 years, but I'm not going to watch horses be abused. And I just thought, you know what, I have to, um, I just have to deal with it and I have to move on. So it's been hard leaving the industry because uh, it's been my life for nearly 20 years and but it, it, it's, I think I've been there for a reason because I have such an understanding and a love for the thoroughbred racehorses and I really think understanding their life in racing is just going to be so important to, um, I just think it's just really valuable um, because they're very misunderstood uh, and a lot of retrainers haven't experienced um, working with them in the racing life and it's very demanding for them it's incredibly um there's so much pressure is put on them everything from the way they live to um their diet to um working and everything so they're amazing animals um and they've put up with a lot but they do need rehabilitation when they come out of racing um and there's some great trainers out there uh you know, a lot of it is done, a lot of racing issues with the horses is done from ignorance um, more than, um, you know, purposely wanting to de be detrimental to their welfare. Anyway, um, I'm rambling on there, sorry. <laughs> I'll go to that. I'll show you the ring bit in a moment. But just for um, Paula, there's something I'll try and find, but that's something similar. If, so see the egg butt. Um, and also, too, another thing, you would have to, I think, maybe um, get onto the bit bank. Um, and have a look, um, Paula, because what might be nice too and is something I'm thinking is the taste of it. So there's, um, see the nice curved bars, you've got the French link and then you've got the egg butt. But also too, you know, we're putting metal in their mouth and that um, is not, um, it may not taste nice. I wouldn't like, it may be causing a funny taste. So then I think maybe looking at, um, <laughs> thanks, Paula. Oh, it's just been so hard. I feel like I've had a bit of a, um, uh, I'm going into the next chapter of my life and I've got 19 horses of my own, 17 off the track thoroughbreds and it costs every single cent goes to them. And it's just been so financially hard and going into seriously doing um, the online courses and all of this is so new to me. I started it two years ago when I had my last, I had two surgeries. I had a track work accident in the barriers and I thought, you know what, my track work days are coming to an end because um, I don't want to die. And the, my accidents a lot, this last one was a train of negligence. It wasn't the horse. Um, it was train of neglig negligence and we do risk our lives. So I started it two years ago and I just didn't even know what a landing page was. And, I mean, I couldn't turn on my laptop three, four years ago. Like, I was really untechy. So this is so overwhelming. <laughs> and then I've deleted. Not only did I let, delete my last, um, the whole, the Thai retraining series actually deleted that, which was horrendous. But I deleted, I'm doing uh, so equitation science that I teach, but I'm doing the diploma of equitation science. So I've I spent a year down with Andrew in that way back. I mean, one of my horses are in his first book. 
um, the truth about horses, I think I've shown many times, but I was um, been studying equitation science for many years, but I um, now doing the diploma that it's available. Um, it qual- so I've got a qualification um, and all of that. And I just love it. I love learning. It's so much um, it's evolved so much. But uh, in one of my whole um, modules, like my whole you go into units, I did my whole end final year assessment, all up trying to put it into a Word doc and every everything. And I finished it all. And it was, one, oh, no, it wasn't 1 o'clock. It was about 11.30 or oh, 10 o'clock or whatever because, I'm you know, I'm 53, 52. I haven't studied for like 30 years or longer than that. So trying to do all of this, I was leaving my assignments and my um, things to the last moment. So I got in, did it all, had it in what I thought was, because um, I've got a Mac in um, Keynote or whatever it was, pressed one button and the whole thing disappeared. The whole thing just went, my whole final assessment and everything. And I was just like, no way. That happened in the last year. One little button, like my Thai retraining thing, one little button. And I was like, that's it. And so I did. <laughs> I was that I was horrified. And I was on to onto the phone to Apple and everything. Can I get it back? How do I do this? And it was like, no. And it was a weekend actually. So I I got onto the phone to Apple with the Thai Thai course and I had done the same thing, deleted it. But um I I redid my whole assignment. I was up till 5:30 in the morning redoing because I had to get it. That was it. I'd already had an extension for my exams. I redid it at 5.30 in the morning. I was absolutely exhausted and I passed, like I got all my high marks, but my assessor said, even though it was very simple, your answers were short, you know, you did well and everything. And I thought if I didn't tell her what I did, I should have. But anyway, there you go. There's my story of my have no idea about the whole tech thing and learning by um, mistakes. Terrible, terrible. Anyway, I'm very careful with what buttons I press now. Um, okay, so that's um, um, so that's yeah, the Bit Bank Australia. So that's um, the new Shules Trans Angled Ed Buck Snaffle. So I would look at something like that, and then maybe look at whether they come into um, Paula, whether it comes in, maybe trying even different bits. I think the Bit Bank Australia. Let me go. That has, and I don't know for anyone else that may be watching now or the replay. Um, I think the BitBank might be overseas and I think they have a library of bits. I think you can borrow borrow bits and um, try them on your horse and um, things like that. So I think that's a really good um, thing to do as well. Um, now let me go into um, so your lugging bit. So racehorse. So what we normally use in racing is um, a, a lugging bit. And so I'll show you. I think I actually, you know what, I will find um, BitBank will probably have. And then I'll show you a photo. So even, you know, when I came back um, after I had um, my last returning and I wasn't, I knew it was um, the beginning of the end for writing track work for me because I just, I, I think just, I, I, you know, I'm too passionate about my horses and want to get back into my competing and all of that to risk being injured. So um, I came back and I thought I've lost my nerve just a little bit, um, more so than, you know, uh, I mean, it, it's so full on in racing. You can end up through rails and everything, like bounce, they're bouncing off rails and so, <laughs> I mean, not all of them, but I mean, I've ridden, I've never been a nervous track work rider and um, it, it's quite, you do risk because the horses are pumped up full of energy and um, I wasn't willing to risk getting injured again. Um, but when I went back after having, I think it was a year and a half, I've had both shoulder surgeries and I just realised, you know, um, and doing the retraining, how much, um, no worries, Paula, yeah, let me know how you go. Um, yeah, I'll um I'll show that link. I'll I'll get the link to the as a as you know I ramble, <laughs> but um the ring bit, bink bank, um, lugging bit. Um, 
I just realized how much the horses lean on the bit because I love to teach, and you'll notice with Ty here when, when I get the retraining whole series up because I videoed his whole retraining, how light he came. But um, there's so much on the forehand. They learn to lean in the bit and they learn to um, – balance themselves on the bit as well and a lot of track work riders it's more about just going around um they don't have the equestrian um background it's usually track work riders know um, a lot of them are just racing so they get used to having the horses on the forehand and leaning onto the bit um and when I went back I'm like wow you just no matter what unless you're riding the same horse every single day um they're very heavy and you know they're very very heavy and I always tried to get my horses that I ride track work uh, I like to I like to ride the same ones every day um and work with them I like to have them in self carriage and get them balanced but they're still um you know they're full of adrenaline they anticipate racing and even in their gallops you know when when we're racing and we've got them up on three quarter and hold them they're learning to lean into the bit um so they're still as much as you want them in self-carriage and balance they still have this massive amount of bit pressure um and that's not what we want um when we're retraining them we want to teach them to not have any lean we don't want them to be leaning in the bit at all so we need to teach them to use their body in a completely different way but we need to teach them to have a completely different association with the bit as well um and that takes time uh, let me find um, this lugging bit, bit bank, um, lugging, lugging bit. So what it is, here it is. So this is, well, this is a gag. Let's see if I can find um, bitting uh, horses bit. Maybe talk, look about race horses. Here we go. Um so it's called, it's got a ring at the bottom. Let me see, uh, racing. Uh, universals and combinations might have it here. That's not it. Lugging bit. Sorry, I'm just trying to find, how do I go here? <laughs> Uh, lugging, lugging bit return. Oh, okay, I'll find it. Racehorse. This is a bit bank. Sorry, guys, I'm just. Hey, I'll go back and go back right back here. Well, here's a similar photo of it. So, racehorse. So this is um, logging bit. Here we go. Oh no, that's not that one. They all vary a little bit. It's got a ring at the bottom. Oh, here we go. Okay. I think I might um, – that's not a very good photo. I think um, I'll show you – looking a bit per – here we go. This might um, show you. So the lugging bit gives you better control. Um and because horses, so you have to remember that the horses are really um, they're full of that they're, they're full of energy. They've got a lot of adrenaline. We have them going at speed. Um, we need control. They're young, okay, so they're not trained. So they're not trained to be light in responses. We need the steering and everything. And I mean, I um, nearly all the bits that we rode in were the lugging bits. Um, I'm just trying to find why can't I find a photo of it. Lugging barbit. Here we go. That's still not it. Holy moly. Okay. Um, this one we might show. So this is not the same, but it's got 
This is similar, I'll see. So, and I'll get a photo up for you. So that's a lugging bit. It hasn't, because that's a gag as well. But you can see the ring at the bottom. Okay, so they've got like, it's not like a normal loose ring snaffle or an egg butt snaffle, but it has a ring at the bottom. Okay, so there's a lot of tongue pressure there. There's a lot of bar pressure there. Um, it stops the bit. Now, I've got a, definitely got a photo um, of this. It stops the bit from sliding through their mouth. It gives you a lot more control, but you have to remember there's a massive amount of, with those bits, there's a massive amount of bar pressure. There's a massive amount of um, tongue pressure on it. And then you have to remember that they're leaning up into that. So racehorses will pull, they'll lean, and we have to be quite firm to get them to, to lighten up. So there's just such a lot of pressure on their mouth. Uh, I've got a photo of... Yeah, here, yeah, a really good photo in my about 5,000 library of, <laughs> here we go, perfect photo. Okay, it'd be good to do a Zoom session. So I don't know if you can see here, so you can see um, there's like a loose ring snaffle and then you've got the ring bit at the bottom there. Wait, where's my hand? Oh. There, so you can see the ring bit at the bottom. So it stops the bit from sliding through their mouth. Um, and this horse is racing. I'm pretty sure this was a focus. Uh, this is a horse in a race. Um, and I think this is a very well, a very well known horse. Um, and um, she hasn't got a tongue tie or anything on, but you can still see the amount of pressure. See, look how far she is. So she's up onto the bit. She's leaning into the bit. Um, and you can see the pressure that they're habituating to. Um, she's pulling into the bit as she's racing, okay? Um, I think she's just come across the line here in this photo. So you can just see how high up it is, and that's from the – yeah, they have. Okay, because I remember this photo. She's just come across the line, okay? So she's easing down, so there's no bit there's, – they're actually easing down. And yeah, this is this is that's that's her. So you can just see that um you can still see the contact there and the pressure that's on. So you can see with the ring bit. Here we go. So you can see with the ring bit how much it's actually got a downward pressure. You can see the ring is actually putting a downward pressure onto the bars of the mouth, okay, onto the tongue. And you can see a little tongue. Where's my hand? You can see a little tongue there, okay, so you can see that all that pressure is going down on the tongue and it's not going to be, unless there's complete, there's going to be no relief of the tongue pressure um, unless there's completely no um, no um, connection, you know, on, on a loose rein. Um, can you show, and with the tongue and chain and a bridle? Yeah, chain, so um, the chain, um it depends. Um, there's no chains. So you, they use the um, stallion chains in leading sometimes. Um, generally, this is in Australia, um, no chains um, used in bridles or anything like that. Um, that's more of a, um, a dressage thing when you've got so, and then I've got some photos here. So the tongue tie, I've never liked tongue ties. And once we can, we know the reason, the only reason they're pulling their tongue back is because they're trying to get away from the tongue pressure. Um, and then it does. So when the horse pulls their tongue back, it does restrict their airways and you don't want that in racing. Um, but why are they pulling their tongue back? Um, and it's the, it's, it's the amount of bit pressure. Um, Oh, what am I doing here? Let me see if I can find um, a photo of, here we go. Here we go. So this is a good one. When I learn how to do Zoom, um, I'll do a Zoom session on bits. So this is a good one. So you can see this horse is racing. Can you see? Uh, well, try and get. So you can see that um, the um, this horse looks like he's in flight in flight mode. He doesn't really look like he's he's um he's feeling very good. Um, just by the look in their eyes, he's probably experiencing pain. He may be um you know he's um coming up to the line. I think um so he's being pushed out. 
Um, but you can see once again the, the ring bit. Okay, so the lugging bit is that ring bit at the bottom and it's it's got that downward type of look. It comes down on the bars of their mouth, that gap between their incisors and their premolars. And that's specifically what the ring bit has. It has downward pressure on the bars, but also, too, that includes downward pressure on the tongue of the horse's mouth as well. Um, and it's pretty much, it's, it's in Australia and I know overseas as well, that's one of the main bits that's used. You also do see um, racehorses going around in um, just snaffle bits and also harder bits. I mean, this is not, this is just a very standard um, bit, we use in track work every day to control the horse. Um, and unless you're, you know, if, if I mean me riding 10, 12, 15 horses a morning um, for all different trainers, um, I think it's the way you use the bit. And, you know, I always tried to be as kind as I could um, and teach my horses to be in self-carriage. But, um, you know, it, it is what it is in racing. Um, so uh, until yeah it, that's that's what racing is so we do need to be aware when we get out off the track thoroughbred that that's what they've been taught to do habituated to so much pressure and it's interesting too um I had someone say that when we're just teaching them to respond to tongue pressure and not the massive amount of bar pressure and the intense um pressure they have on their tongue um they can get a bit sensitive with their tongue um, and that can make them a bit mouthy as well. Um, we're teaching them to, and Ty was a good example of that. Um, let's see if I can find a tongue tie one. I've got a tongue tie one here. Um, tongue tie one. I've got so many photos in my phone. <laughs> Well, this is uh well see now we're talking about racing isn't this interesting so i'll just i won't go into this because otherwise it'll be going forever but this is a photo of you know not only is the pressure the bit pressure off we're talking about off the track thoroughbreds okay so um i'm working with the bit pressure that's in racing but look at this the dressage what off the track thoroughbreds are then having to go into if they're not educated properly and we're not looking into you know look at the amount of bit pressure there and this is with dressage show jumping so a bit pressure in incorrect training this is an overbent horse it's a bit hard but you can see the tight nose band one thing you don't often see in racing is nose bands um you do get some nose bands but um it's not really um, – so, you know, it, racing is not the only um, industry that has um, a lot of bit pressure. Dress, the bit pressure in dressage is horrendous. Well, look at this. Um, even worse than racing, I would say, in a different way because um, quite often in track work, a lot of us, we just have them going around on a loose rein if, we, if you know, if they're not pulling or leaning or whatever, um, if you can get your horse like that. Um, so – Bit pressure is everywhere um, in, in incorrect training in all different disciplines. Um, and that is terrible. So you've got um, your nose band and everything. And once again, another, well, we're going into overbent. <laughs> I could just keep going on here. But um, going back to without confusing it, just how thoroughbred racehorses work and what we need to be aware of when retraining them is they've habituated to a lot of bit pressure um, and bar pressure and they've habituated to balancing themselves on their forehand and on their shoulders a lot. So we need to teach them to be in self-carriage. We need to teach them to, instead of leaning onto the bit, to... Um, um, not lean onto the bit, to give to pressure instead of leaning into pressure. So they don't understand how to give to pressure. We need to teach them to give to bit pressure and to use their body in a completely different way. Um, I got a photo of a tongue tie, but I'll go here. There's, um, okay, so one. So here we go. We haven't got a ring bit on here. We've got a... Uh, this is a tongue tie, so a racehorse with a tongue tie on um, to hold the tongue down. And obviously the, the horse was pulling his tongue back. And I'd say with this horse, um, he's been getting his tongue over the bit. So what they've done is they've put an, uh, an, a bit uplifter on. So they've just got a normal um, loose ring snaffle on with an uplifter, okay, to hold the bit up 
in the horse's mouth and a tongue tie for the horse to stop the horse from um, pull, um, sucking the tongue back and getting them over there. So this horse definitely would have been getting his tongue over the bit. He would have been getting his tongue over the bit to avoid the um, tongue pressure. Um, and what they have done is they've um, put a, 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 a bit uplifter, uplifter bit on him. That's what that nose band is for, to hold the bit up in his mouth so he can't get his tongue over and the tongue tie to stop him from pulling his tongue back. So, yeah, there we go. So I might leave it there um, because I'll be going on for over an hour. <laughs> and I hope, look, I hope that is have helped. So, Sarah Becker, find out, um, send me through um, what um, you've been feeding and I'll have a look for you, either PM or you can pop up a post um, in the group or both. And, yeah, and also, um, Kate, let me know. Yeah, you're local. So that's awesome, Kate. Um, let me know how you go with your OTTB. Um, if you ever want any lessons, Kate, um, I'm, I may be heading out Yes Way if you wanted to hook up. Uh, I might even look at doing a clinic out there one day because I've got a couple of clients out that way. So that'll be on my page when I can get back on my page in my website. And um, Paula, I know you've gone, but let me know how you go with the bit. And, yeah, this has been really cool doing our live on um the um youtube um so i'll do our lives on youtube for the next few weeks anyway and might even continue doing them on here because i can see the the comments easier and go from there so anyway i will leave it there uh, thank you for watching i hope it's been helpful and i will um see you in the group as my pseudo facebook profile <laughs> Kaz Gracie, I can't see you on my page for another three weeks, um, but I'll see you on YouTube soon. I'll get some videos uploaded on YouTube. Um, I've got the uh, quite a bit of a I've got a bit of a um, a back a, a backup of videos. I have to get up and out. Um, I've been in 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 not in the zone lately, as I said, for a few different reasons. But anyway, lovely to have you here, and I will see you soon. Bye.